What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for this project as with most of the projects I hop on here for. I'm doing a garage pergola. It's going on my 15 foot garage. So if you have a 15 foot garage, the specs that I use for my cuts will work for you. If not, make sure you measure and adjust to your specifications for your own garage. But let's jump into this video, you guys. You'll never look back once you felt that. To start out, I am just going to be cutting off the butt ends of every piece. That way I know I'm starting with a 9 degree angle. I'm doing the backer plate that's going to go up against the casing that's already on the exterior of the garage and I'm going to measure them to 22 inches for the left and the right and then the center backer I think is six inches that is the thickness of the casing that's currently on my garage so let's get to cutting hell damn wasting time on your dreams instead of mine yeah about to turn this franchise around on a dime man it's all about finding your right state of mind it's all about turning the work in the fine it's all about time and the work and the climb from the thirst we will rise I'm immersed in this life what I just did was I cut down the backer pieces for the rafter and this is where the rafter support will go and then the decorative arch that we'll be cutting out of two by sixes. And then this is just the center piece for the backer. Significantly smaller because the casing on my garage only gives me about uh, three and three quarter inch to work with. So this guy is about three and three quarter inch um, setup. But these are 22 inches. These are gonna go on the right and the left. And again, be the support braces for the rafter brackets. Look that side, there you go, boom. So the wood is still wet, have to work with that, but very excited to have the first few cuts done. Wow! Now I'm gonna take my hand router and I'm gonna router around the backer pieces that were the two by fours that I cut out just to give it a little more detail and not look like it's a two by four just stuck up, um, up against the garage, you know? Wanted to look more professional, so, and I have a router, so why not? The router I plan on using is this DeWalt 20 volt battery operated hand um, one with this acrylic bottom. I love this guy. Um, I ended up getting like a dual package with him and a impact driver, and I use this all the time. The taste of the race, you'll never look back once you felt that. <laughs> I always do is I have a scrap piece of wood this is a scrap 2x4 and I'm just gonna use it to adjust where I want my um, router bit to sit I will also run this guy over this scrap wood just to make sure it's the look I'm going for because I'm not the best with the hand router depth to figure it out through the visual conception of where this router bit hits the wood to use a router if you are routering a without a router table always secure your wood with clamps um you don't want your wood to be sorry the lighting's horrible you don't want your wood to be kicked back or in any direction routers are a very high rpm and that would just be a catastrophe so Make sure you use your clamps, clamp it down, work around the clamp, and then switch the clamps to a part you've already done, and you will be good to go. It's all about finding your right state of mind. It's all about turning the worst into fine. It's all about time and the work and the climb from the thirst. We will rise. I'm immersed in this life. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth. Just focus on yourself first. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth. Just focus on yourself first. The next step is to work on the support bracket that will hold the rafters and the purlins. So that's going to be out of 2 by 6 I'm going to cut those approximately 22 inches long 
and then we will do a fun decorative end that way it looks not so much like a two by six attached to my garage like i've been saying with the rest of the stuff so we'll cut that down we have three we have to make um unfortunately that center piece is so small i can't use a two by six i have to use a two by four so i will be making the two left and right braces or brackets whatever you want to call them out of two by six and that center one will be making it out of a two by four this is the backer going against the wall outside of the garage this one flush against the wall this is going to be protruding out and i will be still cutting a little bit of a decorative edge on that guy but for that middle piece this is the easiest way i found literally get your t-square pop it in make sure it is at the 90 and then draw your lines out and then you'll have your piece or your centerpiece and then this will also get a cut in the center just to remove some of the um the material so it's not so bulky but don't mind that board or the rest of this it's this over i figured i would show you guys so i have a angle that i cannot cut on my miter saw i don't feel like doing a little special block to try and figure out this angle from here to there so i just set up a t-square i'm gonna use my circular saw we're gonna cut this line sometimes you don't want to math and that's kind of where i'm at right now is i don't want to math so i'm just gonna use what i have it'll work what i'm working on now are the corbel brackets and you guys already saw i did the um, outside on uh, a round over on that backer piece. Now I need to cut out the arch detail for that center support that I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here shortly if you have no clue what I'm talking about. And also I need to cut out um, a portion of the top four by six because it's just a little too chunky for me. Let's do it guys. The full bracket, uh, it's going to be cut here. This is the arch I was talking about and also over here, but I'll zoom in so you guys can see. This detail, gone. Right here, gone. So it'll look, oops, it'll look a lot less chunky. I also got my true work gear on. These are the T1 work pants and I'm absolutely obsessed with them. They have all the pockets you need. My phone, I usually put it here. Of course, it's on a tripod now, so it can't be in there, but if you guys are in the market for some work wear, True Works where it's at. And I throw on some high socks, and I roll them up because I've got the size that's too short for me. I'm a tall person. So, you know, I don't want to book it now. No big deal. You gotta work, never tell. Keep your head down, find what you love, and excel, yeah. Push and pull and repel any hate, go create what you want, feel compelled, yeah. And once you finally get a taste of the race, you'll never look back once you felt that. I just created the center part of the brackets and I just used my jigsaw, boom. So this will be that center piece and you guys will see what I'm talking about further on down the video, but this is the look I went for for that center arch detail. For the top bracket that's gonna sit on the very top, I'm just gonna take off this little bit of detail right here and it's gonna give it kind of more of a less chunky vibe than what I was getting before when it was just this piece of wood. So taking this little section out making it look a little more elegant and less in your face chunky. Yo, I 
think about others way before my What I'm doing now is taking the one I'd cut already and I am tracing it onto the second bracket. A little crazy trace. Buddy, take your time and your worth. Just focus on yourself first. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth. Just focus on yourself first. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth. Just focus on yourself first. I'm working on that center support beam that is the one that's out of a 2x4 because the 2x6 is too large for the casing structure that my garage has. So I'm just kind of following the casing structure for the sizes of the backer bracket. So 2x4 is what's going to work. What I'm going to do is measure out 22 inches, cut her down, and then do a small curved detail on this one as well. That way they're all kind of similar and I don't have one that's just a straight stick on the wall. Self on your face, on your dreams, on your mind, on your health, yeah. You gotta work, never tell, keep your head down, promise you love and excel, yeah. This is the one we're working on. This is that small, uh, let's see what its actual measurements are. It is actually four and three eighths. I kept saying three and three eighths, I think through the whole video, but four and three eighths for my center brace backer and like I have been saying as well obviously a two by six is not going to work with this as a support so I have to do a two by four and it will work perfectly here and I will also just be taking the curve that I made on the, the um, two by sixes and just kind of tracing over to get the same, um, I guess, look for the center as the rest of them. I'm giving everything a once over with 80 grit sandpaper. Uh, right now I'm currently working on the bracket pieces. That way I can get them all put together and then hopefully painted and installed before the weekend is up. Focus on yourself first. Took the roundover bit again and routered around all the pretty sharper edges on the rafter holder bracket thingamajiggies. That way it looks super clean and nice and not so poke your eye out. Round it over, not round it over. This is that backer brace for the corporal bracket. So I've, I'm looking to find my center point so I can drill my two holes, pre-drill them with a smaller bit, a bit that's just a little bit smaller than the actual screw I'm using so I can secure the rafter piece that will be supporting the rafters into here. And then I will figure out the arch brace on how to secure that probably from the back side and then one up through the uh, bracket brace topper so let's do this center point on this is an inch and three quarters so inch and three quarters in the middle inch and three quarters in the middle and these are where my two holes will be drilled and then i will be securing the rafter piece the rafter uh whatever you want to call it the top part of the corbel bracket All 
All right, I'm absolutely going insane here. So this piece keeps shifting. Um, I don't know if it's because I can't drill a straight hole. I've always had that problem. Like when I'm drilling the pilot hole, maybe I'm curving up, most likely. So this piece is shifting this way by like a quarter of an inch and it's making it not level, not straight, not not great. So I'm gonna see if I put, I put a clamp on this side to hold it in the center place and I also put a clamp over here on the other side, right there, hopefully. Oh, I'm really, really hoping that this thing won't move and it will stay straight because I'm going absolutely crazy doing this. Attempt number 395. I wish I was joking. Okay, that worked. So if you're doing this project and you're using outside wood that has been treated, which you should be using if you're doing a pergola, um, we had treated lumber, we're gonna be painting over it, but that, tr that trick I just showed you with putting the two um, clamps on the side to hold it in the center so it doesn't jiggle and wiggle, awesome tip. Wish I would have known that and done that sooner. Would have saved me a headache yesterday. Would have saved me a huge headache. So do that, make sure all your stuff's center and it will not be wiggling and jiggling when you're trying to screw it in if you can't drill a straight hole like me. I don't know, it's just a problem. I suck at it, whatever. I'm gonna try and put two more clamps on each side here, drill from the bottom. That way I don't have to fill any holes here. And then I will have one screw um, going through the top here versus multiple. So I want it to look professional grade like I've been saying since the start. Hopefully she still does. Um, but let's get to trying to figure out how to secure this baby without it being all wiggly wobbly. I'm fine, but you love and excel, yeah. Push and pull and repel any hate, go create what you want, feel compelled, yeah. And once you finally get a taste of the race, you'll never look. Hey guys, I am at Lowe's. <laughs> because I need to get some deck screws. I need three inch screws to secure the corbel brackets onto the garage. Um, I think I already told you I needed the piece of wood as well. I cut, <laughs> I cut one of the boards too short. I don't know, I was just going crazy. I was like, all right, I already did these measurements. Did the measurement once, let me just go ahead and do this. Um, and that was a fail, so. doing the second coat for the corbel brackets. I am using this roller. The first time I went, I just did a two inch brush um, and you could really see all of the um, brush strokes and I didn't want that. I want this to look very clean and flat. So I'm using this guy, which will give a clean flat finish. Next step is to do the pilot holes in the back here, I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. So four total, and I'm gonna countersink them so I can put in these little buttons. Oh, of course it's gonna, there we go. Put in these little buttons so that way you don't see the screws. This is that middle bracket brace. So I did a countersink drill bit. That way I can cap these. I bought these little buttons and then we'll paint over them and then you won't see these holes and it'll look like it's supposed to be here. This was a screw that I did not countersink and I put some 
wood filler in it and I soaked the paint over it but instead of doing that and having that wood filler I like I said I'm gonna have these cute little buttons and they are going to be so cool looking and make it look like it's supposed to be there and I didn't just drill them into the wall. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth just focus on yourself first. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth just focus on yourself first. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth just focus on yourself first. The brackets have officially been completed. The holes have been drilled and countersunk. And these are the cute little buttons I was showing you before. They will go on top of these holes. Like that, I'll show you. Just like that. That way it looks so cute and it'll get, they'll get painted over so they will also be white. But I'm super excited. I think it's gonna be very, very cute. And then these are the little cool brackets I made. Wow! All right, and then I decided to go with six holes, measuring equally all the way down. So we have max secure ability on our pergola. You gotta focus on yourself, on your faith, on your dreams, on your mind, on your health, yeah. Cobra brackets are done. This one completely done. All the buttons have been secured in so you cannot see the screw heads which is exactly what I wanted. I will zoom in do close up to those for you guys so you can check it out. Same with the middle one. The screw heads are covered with the little buttons and again same with this cobra over here. But this is where we're at right now with it. All three are up. Just waiting to get the rafters up and the purlins but we're going to secure that as one unit. Right now I am cutting up the blocks for the spacing for the rafters to go on the brackets. I'm doing four and a half inches on the back end, eight inches in the middle and six and a half in the front. That way I will have equal spacing on all three brackets down the line. All right, these are the rafters. These two are completely done. They will sit about one foot off of the bracket. So from the end of the bracket, about 12 inches extra for overhang for the rafter tops and they will be budding up on this middle bracket so half will be on this half, half will be on this half and then the other one will be Set of mind, yeah, about to turn this franchise around on a dime, man. It's all about finding your right state of mind. It's all about turning the worst into fine. It's all about time and the work and the climb from the thirst. We will rise. I'm immersed in this life. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth. Just focus on yourself first. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth. Just focus on yourself first. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth. Just focus on yourself first. All right, you guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video for the DIY garage pergola. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and I'll try and get back to you guys on those. But as always, I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye.